Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be still solving rational equations, except now we're going to have more than two or even more than three fractions involved, which means we can't cross multiply anymore. It's not just going to be some fraction equal to a fraction, it's going to be some fraction plus another fraction equal to a fraction, or more than that. So you're going to need your notes, your foldable pen or pencil, calculator, everything as always. If you were given this problem, 1 7th plus something over 7 is equal to 5 over 7, you'd be almost like immediate to tell me that 1 plus 4 equals 5. And so you probably didn't even think about how all these had a common denominator. You just focused on 1 plus 4 is equal to 5. So in today's lesson, we're going to be focusing on just the numerator to solve. Once we have a common denominator, so the goal is to have to get to get a common denominator and then after that to just solve I'm going to say the tops. So once we have a common denominator like all these fractions in order to keep solving we're just going to focus in the numerator to figure out what x is. Example number one, 1 half plus 2 over x is equal to 1 over x. So in order to solve this rational equation, we need to first, remember, get a common denominator. So we need a least common denominator. Well, I know that one of my denominators has a 2 in it, and my other two denominators have an x in it. So my least common denominator is going to have a 2x. So I'm going to set up my three fractions, so something plus something equals something, but I know that in order for one half to get a common denominator of 2x, I'm going to have to multiply this guy by something. But we already have a 2 in the denominator, so in order to get from a 2 to a 2x, I just have to multiply by x, and whatever I do to the bottom, I also have to do to the top, so that leaves me with 1x in my numerator. And so same process or same mental thinking for the next one. If I have an x in my denominator, I need to get to a 2x, so I need to multiply by 2, and whatever I do to the bottom, I also have to do to the top, and so 2 times 2 is equal to 4. And then that's the same thing for 1 over x. So we're going to have to multiply by 2 to go over 2x. And just like we did in the first problem that we didn't write in our notes, now that we have a common denominator, all that matters is focusing on the numerator. So we're going to change this equation to something simpler. Just 1x plus 4 is equal to 2. So minus 4, minus 4. Now we have x is equal to negative 2, and that's my answer. And if we really wanted to, we could check for extraneous solutions like we've done in the past. So we would have 1 over 2 plus 2 over a negative 2 is equal to 1 over negative 2. If we simplify all this, we get 0.5 plus a negative 1 is equal to a negative 0.5, and that holds true, so I know that x is equal to negative 2 works for my solution. Example number 2. So for example number 2, we have to find a least common denominator. You can probably tell right away that they don't have any common denominators. But we can factor this sum of, um, sorry, this difference of squares. So x squared minus 1 is the same thing as x plus 1, x minus 1. So now I know that one of my denominators has an x plus 1. One of them already has an x plus 1 in addition to an x minus 1. And then my other one just has a 1. So in order to find the least common denominator, I'm going to need an x plus 1 for sure, and I'm going to need an x minus 1. So if I set up my fraction, <clears throat> probably didn't give myself enough room on the left-hand side, but that's okay. Each one of my denominators is going to be that x plus 1, x minus 1, x plus 1, x minus 1, x plus 1, x minus 1. So now let's look at 3x over x plus 1. In order to go from this denominator to x plus 1 times x minus 1, I'm going to have to multiply both things by an x minus 1. 
So distribute that 3x to both things, so we get 3x squared minus 3x. Now if we go to 12 over x squared minus 1, that denominator is already x plus 1, x minus 1, so that just stays as a 12. And then if I go to my 2, well, that denominator just has 1, which means that in order to get from 1 to x plus 1, x minus 1, I'm going to have to multiply by the whole thing, x plus 1, x minus 1. So distribute that 2, and you're going to get 2x plus 2. That still times x minus 1. So now you have to FOIL that. So 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times a negative 1 is a minus 2x. 2 times x is plus 2x. And then 2 times negative 1 is minus 2. But now that we have everything with the same denominator, it's like we can just get rid of those and focus on the numerator. So I have 3x squared minus 3x is equal to 12 plus 2x squared minus 2x plus 2x minus 2. Well, these cancel. 12 minus 2 is 10, so I'm left with 2x squared plus 10. And I still have a 3x squared and a minus 3x. So I have x squareds involved, which means that I'm going to have to move everything to one side but I want to keep my x squareds positive. So that means that I should subtract the right side to the left. So I'm going to subtract that, subtract 10, so I can get one side equal to 0. Well, 3 minus 2 is 1x squared minus 3x minus 10. Notice that these two are not like terms. I just moved it all onto one side. And so now we have to factor using trinomial methods. So set up two sets of parentheses equal to zero, we have x and x. Two numbers that multiply to 10 or add or subtract to three, that would be five and two. We need a negative five, positive two, and we get x is equal to five and x is equal to negative two. Again, if you wanted to go back and check um, with a calculator, you could tell that these two solutions do work. So these two solutions do work. I'm not going to show you that they work. I just mentally checked in my head um, for the sake of time. Um, but you can also make sure to check, check for extraneous solutions. I didn't do it. I just checked in my head. So make sure for each one of these problems you check for extraneous solutions. Example number three. So we have 1 minus 8 over x minus 5 is equal to 3 over x. Well, we can already tell that they don't have common denominators, which means we're going to have to find the least common denominator. So 1 is the same thing as 1 over 1. And we know that we have an x in one of our denominators and an x minus 5 in one of our other denominators. Set up three fraction bars. Each one of our denominators is going to need to have that common denominator that we made, which is x times x minus 5. So 1 over 1, it doesn't have any of the denominators, so we're going to have to multiply by x times x minus 5. If we distribute 1 times x is the same thing as x, then distribute the x. So x squared minus 5x, because x times 5 is 5x. Okay, now if we look at 8 over x minus 5, we have to figure out what times x minus 5 gets us to this common denominator, and that would just be an x. So whatever we multiply on the bottom, we also have to multiply on the top, so that's an 8x. Then we go to 3 over x. What times x gets us to the denominator x times x minus 5? Well, that's the part that we don't have, which is x minus 5. So that's what we have to multiply on the top and the bottom. So distribute the 3. We get a 3x minus 15. Okay, and now we don't have to worry about the bottom. We just need to worry about the numerator. So we have x squared minus 5x minus 8x is equal to 3x minus 15. A negative 5 minus 8 is a negative 13x. So now we have x squared minus 13x is equal to 3x minus 15. Because of this x squared, that means we're going to have to factor, so get everything to one side. 
So we get x squared minus 16x. If we add the 15 to both sides, add 15. Now we have x squared minus 16x plus 15, excuse me, is equal to 0. I'm going to rewrite it up here because I'm running out of room. x squared minus 16x plus 15 is equal to 0. Set up two sets of parentheses. x times x is, gets me an x squared. Now we need two numbers that multiply to 15 and add to 16. Well, that's going to be 15 and 1. We need them both to be negative so that we can add to a negative 16 and multiply to a positive 15. If we set each of them equal to 0, we get x is equal to 15 and x is equal to 1. If you go and check for extraneous solutions, you'll realize that 15 works and 1 works. When you plug in 15, we would get um, 3 equal to 3. And when you plug in 1, you get 1 fifth equal to 1 fifth. Um, I just quickly did that in my head. So you should always check for extraneous solutions. But for the sake of time in this video, um, I'm not going to show you that I checked. You'll just have to check on your own and do some mental math and some PEMDAS. And our last example, example number four, I'm going to help you find the least common denominator. And then after that, you should be doing this on your own. And I will come, when you come back to class, I'll check your notes to make sure that you did it and that we understand it. But I want you to try a problem on your own with um, how we solve using the least common denominator. So I have a denominator that has x plus 1, a and it also has a denominator that has 2x and x. So my least common denominator is something that each denominator will have in common. So we know that a 2 has to be involved. We know an x has to be involved because this one has an x and this one has an x. And we still have to account for this x plus 1. So the least common denominator that you should be setting up should have 2x, x plus 1, 2x, x plus 1, and 2x, oops, x plus 1. So from here on out, you have to ask yourself, what times this gets me to 2x plus 1? 2x times x plus 1. What times 2x gets me to 2x times x plus 1? And what times x gets me to 2x plus 2x times x plus 1? So from here, do on your own. And I will check, I will check your notes when you come back to class. So make sure you do example number four in your notes using this least common denominator that I already helped helped you with. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for taking such good notes, and I'll see you soon.